Um, so the agenda for tonight, um, we're going to uh, talk about uh, the process a little bit, so I'm going to explain what we're, we're doing. Uh, we're going to get into um, some of the, the uh, strategic um, uh, pieces of guiding strategic innovation, so the guidelines that are really driving this process, they're really related to education. Uh, we're going to then talk about some learning environments uh, to support innovation. So what we're going to share with, with you tonight is um, a lot about education. We're going to show you some places uh, and pictures and images of um, places that are really great learning spaces. And so it's really uh, by showing you these things, we, we want to show you what's possible. Um, now, no, nothing has been decided yet, as I mentioned before. We haven't really started the design, uh, but it's a great um, start to really, you know, think Think broadly, think about the future, think about what could be. Um, after that, I'm gonna talk just really briefly about the site. Uh, as I mentioned, we haven't really got into uh, doing anything. We've done a site analysis, and we had a meeting uh, earlier today with a design ad ad advisory team, and we got a lot of input on, um, on the site from them. Uh, on that committee, there's a lot of uh, immediate neighbors. They have a lot of knowledge and information about this uh, site that was very helpful, and um, all of that is gonna be taken into consideration uh, as we get, in, get into design and start to lay out the, the building. And then we're gonna have a big chunk of time at the end for Q&A, and also just general feedback. This is an opportunity uh, for you tonight to um, tell us what's on your mind, tell us you know, what you would like to see for the new school here. Um, so we'll have a big chunk at the uh, very end uh, for that. Um, this is a page that has a little bit more information about the process, and so you can uh, get information on there. There's also gonna be opportunities um, to provide feedback on that website. Also, we're gonna be posting things uh, as the project move, moves forward, so uh, you can um, gather information from that website there. Another thing that we would like to do tonight, we've handed out some sticky notes, and what we would like to do is, um, throughout uh, the presentation, I'm gonna ask you to, I like, I wish, I wonder, and basically we wanna hear your feedback. So write down anything that's on your mind, and then we're gonna ask you to, at the very end, kinda post it on the, on the wall there. There's on the back wall on the, um, kinda the orange sheet there, and then up front here, there's space for that as well. So we'd love to collect more feedback from you so feel free to jot down notes. If you even have uh, more questions, that's great too. We'd love to gather more input. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the process here. Um, we are in what's called visioning and programming. And so um, what this is, is um, it starts with uh, discovery. And that's um, what we're doing right now. Is, uh, we, we had a full day today. Uh, we have another day tomorrow where we're gonna be working with uh, students and teachers, uh, parents are going to be involved, staff members of the school, and we're going to um, uh, talk about design patterns, we're going to talk about learning spaces, we're going to talk about things that, um, that they would like to see in their new school. So we have a whole day planned tomorrow of uh, interactive work workshops uh, where the students are going to be drawing, we're going to gather a lot of feedback. Um, the next piece is uh, what we call concept and programming. And we're going to start to develop some concepts. So it's not the design yet. It's not a floor plan. It's really just a concept or an idea. Uh, part of that is, is starting to test fit where a building could go on the site or how uh, something um, building could lay out. Um, programming is identifying all of the elements of the school. So uh, it's identifying how many classrooms there, there's, uh, there will be, uh, what types of spaces, the quality of the spaces. So it's really just kind of creating that list of what we're going to include in the, in the new design. And then we'll have a final concept. And again, it's a concept. It's not really getting into a floor plan yet. That's actually going to end um, uh, uh, during the beginning of October, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that schedule, and then we get into what's called schematic design, and that's where we start to draw floor plans and what the building is going to look like. And so from October to November, we'll be in that phase. Uh, part of the discovery visit is we will be producing this report. This is an example of a report. We also worked with Summit Middle School, and we did a discovery report. You can see it's dated in February, and. Um, this uh, report included a lot of things. We um, spent a couple days at their school and we learned a lot about what they were doing. Um, we conducted focus groups and so all of this information was collected in this report. We had some key findings. 
And then we've included some sketches that the students did. So these things are all kind of captured and memorialized in this report, and that's what we will be producing. And that's going to be finished, a draft of that, by the end of this month, and then it'll be kind of put out there uh, beginning of October. All right. So uh, Dr. Messenger actually began this conversation just a little bit ago when he was talking about the innovation guidelines and what's been happening in the last, oh, three months or so. Our firm has been working with the district to develop uh, some coherent understanding about what innovation is. Because as many people as there are in this room, there probably are different definitions of that. Uh, some of you might be thinking it's, it's, it's about the, 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 the objects, the, the kinds of facilities and the equipment that we put into it. But we're, we're, we've been working with the district encouraging this idea that it's really less about the stuff and more about the experiences that students are having and what people are doing. It's about mindset. So in that spirit, we've been working to develop an, a set of innovation guidelines that could really help uh, the decision-making process as, as a school moves forward and thinking about teaching and learning and the spaces that we design for it. So uh, the first layer was having some workshops and, and, def and working out what are these elements of innovation that we really want to concentrate on. Uh, a draft of these, these uh, uh, these elements, these ideas, was submitted to the principal group in a, in a large cohort of teachers and, and uh, other stakeholders for a workshop this uh, summer, I, I believe it was in August. And then uh, the, the innovation guidelines, which I'm going to show you in just a moment, emerged out to, to um, uh, both the exemplar schools and now are available to the to phase one schools. We're looking at these for guidance and help. And then we're thinking about uh, while guidelines are just as they suggest, guide, guidance, they're providing guidance, co schools may pick up these guidelines and interpret them with the understanding of their culture and ethos of the school and develop cornerstones that will help decision-making processes moving forward. So I should mention also that these guidelines really are tied very closely to the, the new strategic mission, vision, and uh, in particular the success effect, which is the, the document that's helping the district in its guidance as it pursues its strategic plan. So there's a lot of a close alignment was paid, uh, we paid a lot of attention to aligning these, these two uh, documents of guidance. So these are the innovation guidelines, so I'll just run through them real quickly. Learning is founded in inquiry. Learning fosters a culture of curiosity and risk taking. Mastery of learning is demonstrated in multiple ways. Learning is a social process. Learning is powerful when students create solutions to authentic challenges that impact their local, national, or global community. And learning is personalized and learner-led. And in, all, in our work around the world, when we see a district focusing on, on learning, the nature of learning, we see excellent results. And, and these are a, a fantastic batch of guidance, uh, guidelines that will really serve this school extremely well. So I just want to show you some images of what this might look like in practice. Obviously, learning is found in inquiry. These boys don't even know their picture is being taken, and they're, they're deep into a project discovering. Here's some students uh, supported by a space that gives them uh, the opportunity to take risks, spill things, knock things over, and develop and construct. We want to support that curious curiosity and risk-taking. And for these students, their curiosity is supported by a variety of furnishings and resources and books and, um, and, and the availability to choose where they, where they want to do their work. Uh, you'll notice that, that these classrooms are spilling out into a commons area. So beyond the classroom, we're thinking beyond the classroom as we approach these school designs. Learning fosters a more curiosity and risk-taking. These students are, are exploring uh, gardening. Even space can either uh, empower us to think broadly and expansively and be curious. This raised ceiling and all the light that pours through really has an effect on our mind and the way we pursue our ideas. So this space uh, uh, is an example of, of an environment that would really promote curiosity and risk taking. And for teachers, it might mean uh, a closer connection with their colleagues. So collaboration is, while sometimes uh, a little risky, but it can be very powerful and it can fuel the curiosity that our teachers naturally have. Mastery of learning demonstrated in multiple ways. So we're thinking about beyond, beyond tests, 
beyond those, those scores, but thinking about a variety, a whole host of ways of demonstrating what students can do and what they know. This is a prototype lab where students are allowed to, are able to create in the, on the right-hand side of the screen there and then store their products that are in development in the left side, in, in, in racks that are viewable and transparent to anybody walking by to see and, and, and get inspired or curious. Learning is a social process. This group of students gathered very quickly, moved furnishings aside to be able to sit on the floor and have a more of a campfire discussion and, and, and learn from each other by telling stories, being able to see each other's faces rather than looking in one direction. Thinking about uh, the social process, think how can, we, how can we expand our notion of community? Um, as I walk through the hallways of this school today, I noticed that community is very uh, uh, present in terms of the, the culture here, and I understand that's very important, but as I see it, I look at lots of individual communities. And it's difficult to create a larger sense of community for, uh, for a student without the kind of spaces and environments that bring people together. That builds a culture, an academic culture, that really promotes success. Uh, this is a whole school gathering on a gathering stair that can be used this way or this way. These students are working on uh, changing the world in a very uh, focused way. They're, they're providing food to their school. So they're growing it, they're preparing it, and they're, um, they're working to change their world, work within their world. Learning is personalized and learner-led, and, and this, this picture always makes me wonder where the, where the teacher is in this photograph. And I think you'll have a hard time finding them, but you also have a hard time finding a student who's distracted or off-task. And just as much as we need collaborative environments to learn how to work with each other, to learn how to learn from each other, uh, it's sometimes really important, almost in equal proportion, to be able to work in quiet, reflective modes as well. So this kind of space affords a student that's, that place apart where they can cave away and in a nest and do some reading or some quiet productivity work. Uh, the research really supports this balance between collaboration and independent work, and we have to make spaces that support both modes. They might want to work in a space like this, particularly when thinking of high ideas, infused by light and, and good views. So I invite you to think about what you like about those images, what you like about these uh, ideas behind the guidelines, and invite you to, to, to wish and wonder as well. I'll pass the mic to... So this next piece here, I'm going to share with you some learning environments. And Chris shared um, a lot of uh, great images of spaces, and he was connecting um, the, those actual um, guidelines to um, what it could look like, what, what kind of spaces. Um, I'm going to go a little bit deeper into that, and I'm going to show a little, little uh, bit more with that. Um, and then we, we do have a video that we're, we'll share with you that shows a space in action. So you can kind of see how a space, um, how it works throughout the day. So the first thing I want to start by saying is this is not the open classroom. <laughs> and I'm sure many of you may have experienced uh, an open classroom space where everything was wide open and um, acoustics were horrible in those spaces. <laughs> it was very difficult for a teacher to teach a group of students and another teacher next to them with just a partial wall between them. Um, it didn't work. And so um, what we're talking about is not an open classroom. What we're talking about is really um, having flexibility through variety. I, I'm go, I will share those with you. The point, though, that I want to make is that this is not new, what I'm talking about, that there's a lot that's happening in higher ed, in the business world, and in other schools of, around the nation and around the globe right now, uh, where learning is changing quite a bit. We know through research that learning is um, much better when it's active, when students are really engaged in what they're doing. And so you can see here, this is a studio space at Stanford, and um, they have prototyping labs where they're designing things, they're solving problems. Uh, Stanford D's school over here, um, they, they're brainstorming, they're, they're uh, risk taking, they're coming up, up with many ideas, and you can see how the spaces are much different than a traditional lecture hall or much different uh, than that um, uh, traditional teacher-led instruction. Here's an active learning space 
uh, at University of Minnesota, and you can see um, collaborative surfaces where uh, students can think um, aloud and collaborate with one another, brainstorm together. Uh, MIT has actually replaced their uh, freshman physics lecture halls with what's called TEAL, Technology Enhanced Active Learning. So rather than having a um, tiered seating area where you have 80 students looking at a teaching wall, they are now working in small groups, in teams, collaborating with one another. Uh, and then technology is allowed or allows them to uh, be able to present back and communicate that information back to a larger group. And so this is um, at MIT. So things are really changing uh, already in the world today. Uh, Problem-based learning at Georgia Tech. So you can see how their spaces. It's more about um, collaboration. It's more about discussion, student-directed learning. Again, you see less of that teacher-directed instruction. So. Um, a lot of our classrooms today still look like this, though. And so in a space like this, um, it, it works for teacher-directed instruction, but if you're trying to do other activities, it makes it very difficult. The space doesn't really allow you to do that project-based work. It doesn't really allow you to do small group breakouts. And so in a sense, the space is, an, is a tool. It's an educational technology, and it um, facilitates different types of activities. So as I mentioned, we're trying to look for flexibility through variety. So having a variety of space types. So it doesn't mean that every space is open and we're uh, creating these open environments where students kind of run wild throughout the space. It's having really purposefully built spaces. And so you have some great classroom spaces. They still exist. Uh, you have some small group rooms. You have a common area where kids can go out and um, work independently. They can um, learn through social processes. Um, having um, uh, spaces that can um, flow from one to another. So rather than compartmentalizing spaces from one another, that you can flow from a classroom out into a common area or flow into a small group room. So it's really creating that, that variety of space types. So you can still have direct instruction. You still have spaces like this that look like a, a regular classroom, uh, and a teacher can lead instruction. But you can have spaces like this, um, where you can open up spaces to one another and be able to go out into a common area. So students can do things like this, where they can work individually, spaces uh, like this, where they can present to one another, present to their peers, and demonstrate what they have learned. They can do this where they can collaborate and use technology in small groups. Uh, they can do this where they're um, working together um, without technology even and having fun. You can see on their faces how the students are just having fun uh, and they're really actively engaged in, in the learning that they're doing. Um, spaces for this, project-based learning. And even spaces like this. So connecting to nature and um, this, this is a uh, real opportunity we have here in Boulder and especially the the site you have here there's a lot of um, great green space out here that we can really take advantage of and really create a lot of outdoor learning spaces as well uh, so what we're talking about is um, trying to move away from a organizing spaces around a more of an industrial or information age where you have just a corridor and you have this identical sized classrooms where you really can only facilitate one type of activity. And we're just trying to organizing it around a variety of space types. So here you still have classrooms around the perimeter, but they're organized around a common space. That common space can use as a project uh, area, it can be used for student-directed learning. Um, there's also um, individual study areas, so small group rooms, seminar size spaces. So it's, again, that variety, and you get that flexibility through the variety of spaces. So one question everybody asks is, how safe is this? And it's, it's really unfortunate that we live in a world today where um, that is a primary concern, um, that we need to make sure that schools are safe for our students. And um, there's a lot of principles that we use and we think about when we're designing a school. Um, also, the district has a, um, a specialist who's involved, a safety specialist who's involved in this process. Uh, we even uh, got to meet with him today and kind of work through some principles. But things that we, we uh, try to take advantage of is natural surveillance. It's very important that you have views, that you have that passive supervision. Um, we think about access control, so having control points, entry points into the school, so that way um, there's only certain spaces that um, people can come into the school. And then we think about layered security. And what I mean by that is having multiple zones that can be locked down, so that way you can control access. And then just really creating a positive environment. So um, the thing that you don't want to do with safety uh, or um, 
designing uh, for safety is creating a school that looks like a prison, that feels so isolated because you're worried about lockdowns. It still has to have a positive environment. It still has to function as a place for education. The school is designed to be relevant to today's learner, which means it doesn't look, feel, or function the same as a traditional school or a school that you and I may have attended. It's a state-of-the-art building, and it really accommodates a new way of learning and a new way of teaching. Uh, I prefer to learn by myself, because then I can concentrate and get the work that I want to do done efficiently. I like to learn with a friend because it just makes me feel a bit more focused, even though sometimes we talk. Our school is built with nine learning communities, and each learning community is comprised of three or four classes. And the teachers within that learning community co-plan and co-teach together. Everything I'm doing is on display. Um, my colleagues and I are constantly um, hand signals or chatting with each other or are collaborating on the fly as needed as, so we can be very flexible with our teaching. The school is really open to bringing in parents and bringing in parents on a lot of different levels. It is a really inviting space around here and we find that the teachers actually open the doors to their community so that the, the parents and the kids in the morning can do family reading together. Do you know what it is? For me, it's not, it's about being genuine and it's about authenticity and that's how I see this building and that's how I see the learning. The learning for me here is real. And we go out into the world even as adults and we have these expectations when we come into a school building that things should be a certain way. And a lot of the time that can be artificial. It's not real life and that's not what's happening here. Everything that happens here is genuine, it's real and it's authentic. We are to actively engage learners. And beyond that, learners are the ones that are supposed to be cognizant of what they need to do, their goals, how they're going to achieve them. Here at Norma Rose Point School, you get to pick on your level of ability and your skill. So you have the opportunity to go to different classes and learn from different teachers depending on your grade level, if you're, um, if you're just on your grade level, or if you're if you have extended your knowledge further. The biggest asset in this school is the level of dialogue amongst educators. Because they have a professional learning office, they are constantly collaborating. Daily, that's daily professional development. It's no longer seven days of professional development per year, it's the 300 days of professional development per year. An example is this morning where we were, um, made some quick changes and so uh, my colleague uh, came to me and just said, oh, well, let's do it this way instead of that way. And I said to the students, this is how we roll. We're gonna be flexible, we're gonna flip around the schedule a bit and that's okay. Um, and the this, this space makes it so easy to do that. Collaboration is pretty, pretty interesting and important because you get to see other people's perspectives and I've actually experimented with that a little bit because I might think something and my group member would recommend something and it would be totally different and it would really help the group. So when you have this transparency, these windows everywhere, this openness, it's such a gift for me to be able to set my kids off, have them working and doing what they're doing, and be able to pop into another room and see what's happening in there, and then see 
that we're all working on the same thing, but the way another teacher or even a staff member has brought or spoken about something and how that's translated and then go be able to go back right away in the moment and say, oh, okay, I've just heard this, let's try it this way. Okay, so I'm going to talk uh, just briefly about the site. And the reason why is that we have not started um, any drawing yet. We don't know where the school is going to go yet. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, we do want to hear some feedback from, from you tonight. I'm sure uh, this is a concern of a lot of people here. And we do want to hear, uh, and there's an opportunity for that um, here at the end. So um, I do want to point out a couple things. As we um, approach the site here, and this is just an aerial view, so you can kind of get your bearings. There's the school in the front of the school there. Uh, the, all the play fields are in the back. Um, the really nice thing about this site is it's a beautiful site, um, and as you are aware, has an amazing view of the mountains here, and that's such a, a nice asset that you have. And so as we move forward, we know that we need to do things uh, to be a good neighbor uh, with what we do with the design. We need to make sure we minimize any obstructing views. Uh, we need to make sure that we um, that the students are safe, and so we've been challenged with um, designing a replacement school. And what that means is building a brand new school on the site, and then um, uh, while it's being built, the students would be still in the the existing school here. And then after the the new building is built, the students would move into the new building, and then the ex uh, existing building would be demolished. However, that's not set in stone. And um, as we go through and study this further, and look at um, how this is actually going to work and the transitions um, that are going to happen, we may have to look at other options through this process. We may have to look at um, possibly. Um, tearing down only a portion of this building. We may have to look at options where we keep a portion of this existing building uh, so that way we can place it in an ideal location. Whatever we do, we need to think long term with this uh, solution. And so we're going to go through the process to do this right and we're going to study many different options for this. Uh, so we started today with the uh, design advisory team. We got their feedback on this and um, a lot of members of that, um, that team uh, our immediate neighbors that do have some real immediate concerns uh, about the, the uh, placement of the school. So that's very important to us to uh, understand that. Um, so that, that really is the first thing. Also, the safety and security of the students, that we have to consider that. And then also, we do have a finite budget, and we have to work within those budget constraints. So we have to come up with a, a solution uh, that is cost effective and that we can actually do, that is doable. 